Mali, let's dig into fundraising. You know, you've raised over $300 million of venture uh, money uh, for Canva. Um, and so talk, talk us through sort of, if you could go back and give a younger Melanie advice about dealing with VCs, pitching VCs, raising money, starting that very first, you know, pre-seed, seed round, and then, and then we can work our way to some of the more later growth stage financings. But what do you wish you knew when you're, when you're starting Canva about how to, how to raise money and how to work with VCs? Yeah. So we have had a pretty atypical funding journey. And we've also had an atypical approach and it worked out atypically at the start unintentionally, but um, by a consequence that we didn't actually have one investor that wanted to really lead the round. So our first round, we ended up with like 20 investors. Um, we had a whole host of people that put in sort of, um, we had a few people that put in 250K, but all the way down to a 10K check. Um, so that was, you know, a real, a, a very vast collection of investors. Um, there was a lot of benefits to that now in retrospect. Um, there was a lot of benefits in having quite a few VCs in the round um, because it meant that as we looked to our next round that we had a lot more um, people to choose from or people that were, were interested and they then again invested in the next round and, and then in, in, in every round since really. Um, and I think that really set us up with a very strong you know, uh, investor base that also really believed in us and barracked for us and barracked for us to succeed. Um, so that was sort of like the initial, the initial approach. But then in the round since when we've actually, you know, Canvas started to hit all the goals that we had spoken about, we've been able to raise the smallest investment round possible um, at the next in value inflection point. So right from the start, we always knew that Canva, hopefully over the years to come, will become a, a big company. And so we didn't want to overcapitalize and over dilute too early on in the process. And so you know, we raised our first round at eight million um, uh, cap. It was on a convertible note. And then it was 25 mil, then it was 75, then it was 150, then it was 350, and then um, a billion and then six, I know. 3.2 then six. But I guess if you, if you did the typical thing and you raise at around, you know, you raise 15 to 20% dilution, which is what a lot of investors um, are wanting, we would literally have none of the company left. Um, and so what we've done is like raise very small um, dilution size rounds, like, you know, you might be a 2% round um, at the next value inflection point or a 1% round even um, as our last one was. Um, which really helps to avoid dilution, enables us to continue to grow. Uh, 